All right, welcome to section 2.3. This time we're going to be talking about a different way of computing the volumes of some of these solids of revolution uh, in a way that is not going to use the slicing method. So previously we took a look at the disk and the washer methods, which were special cases of this method of slicing, where you take some solid, you slice it perpendicular to an axis, and then you integrate the cross-sectional area of those slices. Here we're not going to be looking at any slices per se, we're not going to be finding any cross sections. Rather we're going to be uh, looking at these solids as if they have sort of layers, kind of like an onion. And so uh, let's maybe take a look at first why the method of slicing isn't going to be very helpful for some of these problems, and then we'll take a look at what sort of strategies can be helpful for solving uh, volumes of some of these solids of revolution. So for example one, we're going to let r be the region bounded by the curve y equals 4x minus x squared and the x-axis, and we want to find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by rotating r about the y-axis. So let's take a look at region r first. We had better take a, we'd better think about what this curve looks like, 4x minus x squared. Uh, we know that it's going to be a downward-facing parabola because we have a negative x squared there and no higher powers of x. Uh, and we also know that this factors as x times 4 minus x. So it's a downward facing parabola which intersects the origin, has x intercept at the origin, and has an x intercept at x equals 4. So our uh, curve looks something like this. We're letting r be the region bounded by this curve and the x-axis. So r lives in this region. And what we're doing here is we are rotating this about the y-axis. So we're, we're taking this, uh, this region in the plane here and we're just going to rotate it about the y-axis. and give ourselves a uh, kind of solid, and this solid is going to look kind of like uh, an angel food cake. So we'll, we'll sort of have, uh, let's see if I can draw this. Nope, nope, I'm not gonna draw it. <laughs> too, too challenging for me. Uh, let's see, so we're, we're taking this, this uh, region, we're rotating it about the y-axis, we're getting some solid that looks kind of like an angel food cake. So let's see, so we want to find the volume of this solid, and the way that we might first think to do this is we might first think about trying to use the disk or the washer method, which we're, which we're pretty familiar with. If we were to use the washer method, so that might be kind of strategy number one here. If we were to use this, we would want to think about, well, what exactly are the washers that I'm getting in my surface of revolution here? And if I'm taking this uh, region here and rotating it about the y-axis, the disks or the washers that I will get will have outer radius given by kind of the right half of this curve here, and they'll have inner radius given by the left half of this curve. In other words, we'll get something that looks uh, kind of like this. And maybe you can kind of see what the problem is here. The problem that we're running into is that if I want to compute the volume of this, I know generally that the, or the area of this uh, washer here, I know that its uh, surface area is given by pi times its outer radius squared minus its inner radius squared. But the outer radius and the inner radius here are given by the same equation. They're both given by this y equals 4x minus x squared equation. Typically what we would do is we would want to solve this equation for x in terms of y, because we want to uh, integrate this uh, in terms of y. We want to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals whatever the, the y-coordinate of the vertex is. And we, we really run into the problem with the fact that we don't know how to solve for uh, x in terms of y using this. Uh, if you really want to kind of work on this, I'll give you a hint that you can use the quadratic formula in a particular way to solve for x in terms of y. Um, 
but think about it maybe you don't have to but it's it's a good it's a good exercise and it's kind of a, a nice uh eye-opening way in which uh some of these familiar formulas can can be used but in any case, uh, we're going to really run into some problems here, namely that we don't know how to solve for y in terms of x, or at least, or sorry, we don't know how to solve for x in terms of y, or at least that sounds pretty difficult. Um, and we're not really, hence we're not really sure how to differentiate the right half of this curve from the left half of this curve. So okay, so the washer method is not going to cut it for us. Maybe another approach that we would want to think about would be uh, just more general, the method of slicing. So if we were to take this shape and we were to uh, maybe try to um, find uh, some, some uh, cross sections. So we've tried horizontal cross sections. So another thing that we could try would be cross sections which are perpendicular to the x-axis. And uh, if we were to look and intersect this solid with a plane intersect the solid with a plane uh, perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, what we would end up getting would be some kind of uh, parabola sort of shape. Um, so, so we have, oh, I suppose I'm probably going to need to draw this solid here, aren't I? Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have something that looks like this for the base. And then we know we're going to have kind of the parabola there coming in and on the other side as well. And it will kind of uh, come out towards you and go away from you. And we'll have uh, kind of, uh, yeah, I suppose this is, this is good enough. Um, Let's see, maybe we can we can add some sort of uh, circular bits here. Cool. All right, so we have we have our solid here. And if we want to slice this with some kind of plane perpendicular to the x-axis, then the shape that we're going to get is going to be some kind of parabola here. And we don't have a nice formula. I mean, the, the thing that we would want to be looking at would be the uh, formula for the cross-sectional area here. But to find the area underneath the parabola, we would need an integral uh, because we don't really know, we don't have a nice formula for computing areas of parabolas without integrating. And this would then involve multiple integrals. We would have to do one integral to find the area of this cross section, and another integral to find uh, to integrate this cross sectional area as we vary from left to right. And that sounds difficult, so maybe maybe we won't do that. Uh, the problem that we would run into here is that we would have to do multiple integrals. So we're not going to use this strategy either. So let's maybe think about a different way that we could approach this that would be a little bit nicer for us. So uh, we're going to look at the more general case here. Let's take a, a look at this region R. We're going to have two curves again, uh, f of x and g of x, and the interval a, b, of course. And we want to know what the volume of the solid uh, formed by rotating R about the y-axis is. So we have our region here. Let's suppose that f of x and g of x are, are above the x-axis. It doesn't matter. Uh, this will work just as well if they're below, but the picture is a little easier to draw here. So maybe uh, here's f of x, and here's g of x. And if we have an a and a b, then we want to talk about the region R that's kind of trapped between these functions here on the interval A to B. All right, so we have this region. We're rotating it about the y-axis. And the thing that I want to look at here is rather than trying to think about this, so if we're rotating about the y-axis and we wanted to use the washer method, what we would do is we would look at these sort of uh, horizontal lines and we would rotate those horizontal lines about the y-axis giving us those washers. 
But here I don't want to split this up into horizontal lines. I would much rather think about this region in terms of vertical lines. Uh, if I were computing the area of R, I would really want to integrate with respect to X rather than integrating with respect to Y. So let's think about what happens if I take one of these vertical slices, maybe I take one of these little rectangles here, and I take that rectangle and I revolve it about the y-axis. So if I take that rectangle and revolve it about the y-axis, uh, what I end up with is I end up with something that looks kind of like a three-dimensional a, a three washer, I suppose. I get kind of maybe another cylinder-looking thing here where I have uh, blue on the top, and I have uh, some red sides here, and I have uh, the green curve on the bottom here. And this is hollow. Not the best drawing. But in any case, this is kind of, we get a nice little shell here. And that's going to indicate kind of where the name of this function, or the name of this method comes from, rather. And it's going to be called the shell method. So I have this, this shell here where the uh, top boundary is given by kind of the top of uh, this rectangle, which is bounded by the curve f of x. The bottom boundary is given by g of x. And what I want to do is I want to compute the volume of this little shell here. And I want to then add up all of the volumes of these shells as x ranges from a to b. So let's let's think about what's going on here. I know typically that the I'm calling the width of this rectangle dx here. So that tells me that the depth of this shell is dx. But this shell uh, maybe is a little bit difficult to compute the volume of, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make the volume a little bit easier to compute by cutting it and uh, then unfolding it in some sense. So I'm just going to make a vertical cut right here along this front edge. And I'm going to then unfold it. So if I unfold it, what I'm going to end up with is a rectangular plate, or at least something very close to a rectangular plate. So let's see, I think I should be better at drawing this. Great, all right, so we have the top there. We have the red sides. And we're going to have kind of a green bottom here. Uh, nope. Cool. So what we really want to do here now is, uh, now that we've made this cut, so the cut here occurs, uh, this purple line corresponds to both the left end and the right end here of, of this um, plate that I've drawn. Since we said the depth of this plate was dx, what that's going to correspond to here, or the depth of the shell was dx rather, or the width of the shell, however you want to think about it, it's going to be this, this length right here. Um, that's going to correspond to this length right here. So the depth of this shell is dx, or depth of the plate rather, is dx. If I want to think about the height of the plate, well, the height of this plate is the difference between the function f of x, which was the blue function, and g of x, which is the green function. Of course, if I were, if I had picked uh, some rectangle that maybe uh, lived in the right half of this interval here, where g of x was larger than f of x, what I would be doing is I, the top of this rectangle would be g of x and the bottom would be f of x. So instead uh, of writing f of x minus g of x here for the height, I'm going to think about this as the larger minus the smaller, which is the absolute value of f of x minus g of x. Cool.
Well, so we have the height of my plate here as well. So that is this distance. Finally, what we need to do is we need to compute the length of this here. So let's see, so we have length. Now this L quantity is going to be a little bit easier to think about in terms of this cylinder as a matter of fact, because L here goes all the way around the base. It's one of these uh, base circles here. And we know what the, uh, assuming we know the radius of a circle, we know in fact how uh, long the circumference of the circle is. And that's the thing that we're trying to compute here. We're trying to compute the circumference of this base circle. So if I think about what the radius is, well, the radius is the distance from the center here out to uh, this, this point here on the edge of the circle. And in the corresponding picture of my graph here, what I'm looking for, this radius corresponds to the line that goes from the uh, y-axis all the way out to the x value that we've chosen for this red rectangle. So the radius here is x, which tells me that the circumference of the uh, of this shell that I've drawn here, which is exactly the L value that I'm looking for, is going to be 2 pi times x. All right, so we've done a little bit of computation here for the different parts of the volume of this shell. Now that we've found each of these different parts, we can actually write down the volume. So the volume of the shell is going to be approximately uh, the depth times the height times the length. And so that's going to look like 2 pi x times the absolute value of f of x minus g of x times dx. Finally, to compute the volume of the three-dimensional regions, or the volume of the solid then, what we want to do is we want to add up the volumes of all of these shells, and we want to take the limit then as the depth of these shells goes to zero. So that's exactly what it means to integrate. So we're going to integrate from a to b here, this function 2 pi x times f of x minus g of x in absolute value dx. Great, so this is really nice because uh, now what we can do is notice well, well, we'll talk about this a little bit later in one of the future uh, parts of this section. But for the moment, notice that before, uh, when we only had the washer method available to us, if we wanted to find the volume of a solid of revolution formed by rotating about the y-axis, we would have to integrate with respect to y. Here we found a way of doing the opposite. We can now find the volume of this solid, which we formed by revolving about the y-axis, with an integral with respect to the variable x. So we, we have kind of these two methods now, depending on which way we would rather integrate. If we'd rather integrate with respect to x, the washer method, or the, sorry, the shell method is going to be the method that we want. And if we would rather integrate with respect to y, we're going to be able to use the washer method for that one. All right, so let's write this down a little bit more formally in the shell method theorem. Uh, so if we have uh, continuous non-negative functions uh, with zero less than a less than b, and r is the region bounded by the graphs uh, y equals f of x, y equals g of x, the lines x equals a and x equals b, so this is exactly the picture that we've just drawn. Uh, the volume of the solid of revolution formed by rotating r about the y-axis is this integral from a to b of 2 pi x, absolute value f of x minus g of x dx. All right, great. We've done a lot of theory to sort of develop this so far. Uh, maybe now what you can do is work on the next couple of examples on your own. We're going to come back to this. This is the same example as example one. Um, so take a moment to think about that, and uh, we will... Uh, come back to that in the next video.